lost its sting. Why are things so broken? Again and again we pray. Where has all the mercy gone? The writings on the wall. We just wish that we. Could sleep. We want to close our eyes. We're not who we want to be. We look in the mirror and we don't like the face that we find. We pray that you are listening. God, forgive us one more time. Why? Are things so broken? Again and again we pray. Where has all the mercy gone? We are looking for your face. We are calling out your name. Again and again, your love remains. Hold us, show us again and again. Your love remains. Everything so broken. Still, your love remains. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ is risen. Alleluia and amen. Friends, happy Easter and welcome to worship with Community United Church of Christ in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. This morning, on this Easter morning, we conclude the worship series again and again, which is brought to us by the Worship and Arts Collective, A Sanctified Art. Being the first Sunday of the month, it's also communion Sunday for us. So be sure to have something to break and something to pour later. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be bread and wine or juice. It can be your Easter breakfast, no matter what it is. God will bless it all the same. Today in worship, we're going to be reading from the gospel according to Mark. Now, Mark is the first gospel that was written. And according to Mark, on the first day of the week, the women rise with the sun and they buy spices to anoint Jesus's body. They are shocked to find an empty tomb and they leave in fear and in terror. Mark's resurrection story is less triumphant than the other gospel testimonies. There's um. A more triumphal ending to the book, but scholars believe that the remainder of Mark's gospel was a later edition. And in Mark's original version, we are reminded that Easter comes to us again and again, even if we don't know what to make of God's resurrection ways, and especially when they leave us in amazement, even when they leave us terrified. Nevertheless, the sun rises again and again. And in some days, that's enough. As we enter into worship, as we begin, 
we welcome you no matter where you are, no matter where in the world you are worshiping today. We welcome you. And who are we? We are young and old and middle-aged, gay and straight and in between. We are partnered and singled, happy and sad, confused and inspired. We are street smart and college educated. Some of us can't pay our bills and others of us have more than enough to share. Who are we? We are the body of Christ. And no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here today in this virtual sanctuary. Welcome to worship. We begin this morning with, um, with a prelude brought to us by Aaron. Let's listen. Would you join us in the call to worship? This day is like every other day. Alarm clocks beeped, covers were removed, coffee was brewed, weary bodies came to life. And yet, this day is like no other day. The sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and they knew it was love. So, again and again, we say, The longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Hallelujah. Amen. Again and again and again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Join me in the opening prayer. 
There are a million ways you speak to us, God of the garden and God of the empty tomb. You speak to us in rituals, both formal and organic, in drops of water on foreheads and vows set at the altar, through pieces of bread dipped in ordinary wine, and through shared candlelight on Christmas Eve. You speak to us in nature, your artistry showing up in starry nights, the smell of pine, the rush of water, and in most every sunset and sunrise, you speak to us through our relationships in the comfort of a loved one, the laughter of our friends, and in the security of those who support us and cheer us on. You speak to us so many ways, and we are grateful for them all. Today, though, we just need one. That would be enough. Lean in and breathe life into this sacred story today. We are craving to hear your word like never before. We are craving to understand, to see ourselves in the story. We are craving proximity to you. There are a million ways that you speak to us. Today, we just need one. With hearts longing for resurrection, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Let's sing. A huge thanks to our music director, Kathy Lee, and our choir um, for uh, thanks for Sue Osborne for the photographs and Jennifer Cromley for the trumpet solo. That was glorious. Alleluia and amen. Friends, on this Resurrection Day, the peace of Christ be with you. I want to invite you to unmute yourselves and to offer signs of peace here in the, in the chat and in the comments on Facebook. Friends, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Peace Everybody. Hi. Happy Easter. 
Peace be with you and happy Easter. I want to invite all of our um, kiddos to gather around. And while that happens, just so you know, over on Facebook, I see Jessica and Ramona and Nancy and Carrie and Fred and Jan um, all offering signs of peace. Peace, peace, peace. So we're going to look at another piece of artwork. And I'm going to ask you the question I always ask you, which is, what do you see? And again, I, I can't see the chat. Um, so I'd love, Pastor Nate, if you could help me. What's anybody saying? I'm hearing looks like water. It does, doesn't it? What else do you see? Lights. Lights. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and one says a tornado or the sky looks like a thunderstorm. And then someone else says water lilies. We're getting lots of things here. Oh, I, I think that's really interesting that somebody said that the, that the sky looks like a tornado. We'll talk about that sky in a minute. Anybody else? I'm seeing tornado and then a very creative person says, Silas says that it looks like a giant that looks like an eagle head. And, and I see another person says it looks like a dark sky lighting up the water and the lilies. Mm. Ocean and tornadoes. We're getting lots of, lots of feedback here. That's the interesting thing about, about paintings that are, or pieces of artwork that are abstract can see lots of different things and every person's going to see it differently. I don't think there are any wrong answers. And at the same time, there's something that the artist had in mind when they made it. So this is a, it's a painting, an acrylic painting that has gold leaf on it. And it's by Reverend Liesel Gwyn Garrity. Now, Reverend Garrity knew um, that we would be reading the Mark version of the resurrection story today. And she said that she wanted to paint a picture that looked like what the women saw when they turned around after seeing the open tomb. So imagine that you are standing with the empty tomb behind you and what you are seeing is what she thought the sky and the land looked like. I think it's interesting that somebody said the sky looked like a storm. What the artist said is that she wanted the sky to look like, like an iris that was opening up, which is a flower, but you know, the iris is also the thing that's in the middle of our eye. So I think that's an interesting double meaning. And one of you said earlier that you thought the, the ground looked like water lilies. I think it looks like a path, right? The path that led them there, but it's also the path that leads away, out back into the world so that they can go and tell what they've seen. Now, I have a different question. Does this remind you of any of the paintings that we've seen before in this series. Anybody remember? Uh, someone saying that the gold theme has been here before and then yeah. lights on what might be water has been here before. And it looks mm -hmm. like the one with the starry night and there's another one that says water and baptism. Yeah, there's a lot of threads going back to our previous images. So when I saw this painting, I'm, I'm so glad that you all remember that. I thought, I think we've seen this before, except let me show you what we saw before was this. Let's do that again. Yeah, that's a dramatic this. It's not there yet. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Uh, Do you see the new painting? We see the old painting, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. 
Let's try the new this here. Now, for some reason, it's double. I, I don't know why that is. I ignore this little one over here on the left. But do you see how this looks like the new painting we looked at? It's interesting, right? That, that the artist decided to, to echo that image. Now, this is the painting that we saw the day that we read the story about Nicodemus coming to Jesus in the middle of the night and asking if it was true, like what it is that we had to do to be born anew. And Jesus, um, Jesus telling Nicodemus that God loved the world so much that God gave, um, gave God's only son to be with us. I think it's interesting that that nighttime walk got represented in this painting. And then this early morning walk got painted like this. There's a path of light that leads to and from new life. And sometimes it looks like storms all around us, but God is always there again and again. God's love is always, always, always there. Hey everybody. I want to thank you for looking at artwork with me all through this Lenten season. Um, thank you so much kiddos. You help us to see the way that God works in the world in new ways through your little eyes. And we appreciate it so much. Thanks for coming to the children's moment. I think now um, Chase is going to read scripture for us. Yes. Hear the prelude to our scripture. Whether we take what is written in Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, let us listen now for the meaning it might hold for us on this day. And the sacred reading from the Gospels is from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And the postlude says, may the spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Our next hymn is Jesus Christ is risen today. Let's sing. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, 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 oh,
hear these words from Jan Richardson. While it was still dark, while it was still night, while she could not see, while she thought death held sway, while she grieved, while she wept, while it was still dark, resurrection began. As we prepare for the word preached, would you join your hearts and minds with me in prayer? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We know the Easter story so well, and we know all of its moving parts. The women, the spices, the stone rolled away, the angels, the grief, the gardener, the moment of recognition, the declaration, I have seen the Lord. Except, except in our gospel story for today, so many of those moving parts are missing. Here in Mark's resurrection account, the short version, which Chase read for you, the original good news, the women are met at the empty tomb, not with the risen Jesus. And let me just say, it is a different thing entirely to only be met with an empty tomb. They only get one angel who shares the good news. And it's good news that doesn't sound very good. It sounds like utter panic-inducing confusion and terror. And if you don't know why it's panic-inducing, let me just tell you, I have worked an ER shift when a body goes missing. It's terrifying. And that's what's happened here. All we get is a missing body and an empty tomb and someone who shares good news that doesn't sound so good. So forget what you know about the Easter story. Forget that you know how it all works out. Forget what you know. And instead, be here in this moment. Be here with the women. You've come to the tomb to do the only thing that you know how to do now that it's all over. You're still reeling from the utterly unexpected events of last week. You are bereft and broken. And then, and then he's just gone. But you're told you're told by someone who could be an angel, you're told, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified and he has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place where you laid him. Now go, tell the disciples and tell Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as you've been told. In light of everything, it doesn't sound like such good news. So again, forgetting what you know about the way it all works out, consider for a moment that this is the original ending of Mark's gospel. It's quick and dirty and it gets to the point. The women leave this place of death in terror and amazement. They've received the antidote to death and yet they are still afraid. Wouldn't you be <laughs> with the way this ends with a missing body? Hope and fear, terror and amazement. We know these opposing dualities very well. We know what it's like to live with such ambiguity. 
with restoration both at hand and not yet within our grasp, with the reality of both resurrected life and being still afraid driving us. Originally, this was the end of the story. Mark's gospel ended here. Chapter 16, verse 8. Done. Terror and amazement. Finished. Originally, that was the good news of Easter. How unsatisfying, and yet how so true, and so familiar. Later communities elaborated. They added a broader ending. Not earlier than the fourth century, scholars surmise a continuation of verse eight surfaced. This elongated conclusion says that the women told Peter what they saw at the tomb. And then Jesus makes an appearance and sends them out to proclaim the good news. <gasps> Finally, we see the risen Christ. Later, the story got told in a different way, one that didn't leave us so unsettled, but even that wasn't enough. A longer ending with 10 additional verses also exists. And this version features Jesus not only appearing to the women, but also to the disciples. And he commissions the disciples and ascends to heaven. This ending is in no way amb ambiguous. There's no hope and fear. There's only hope with a, a postscript that assures us that it all works out in the end. Don't worry. It all works out in the end. Here, there's no amazement coupled with terror. In the longer ending of Mark's gospel, there is only amazement. There is only hope. There's only good news. Everything gets resolved. It's clear. It's concise. It's comprehensive. It is, frankly, the kind of good news that we wish we always had. The kind of good news that that gets wrapped up clearly. It's the kind of good news that we wish we had in terms of the pandemic. It's the kind of good news we wish we had in terms of every crucifixion we've ever experienced. We wish every tragedy and every catastrophe, every personal pain and collective sorrow we've ever experienced got restored and set right in 10 simple verses that plainly and clearly cover all the bases with no room for questions or confusion or ambiguity of any kind. We always wish for the kind of resurrection that is devoid of the both and, the kind that just takes care of all the things. We simply want a resurrection that is full stop. And yet, we know that change happens in stages. More often than not, restoration comes piecemeal. The resurrection happens over and over and over again until it's complete. We see that to be especially true with pandemic life. And boy, oh boy, would I like it to be another way. But it's just not the way it is. Moreover, anyone who's lived through grief or dealt with trauma or overcome an addiction or healed after a relationship fell apart knows this to be true. Easter is a season, not just a day. It's true in our faith as it is in our lives, and it's true in our lives as it is in our faith. Second, we are reminded when we read the, oris the original resurrection account in Mark and the additional ending and the second additional ending and the stories of Jesus' resurrection in Matthew and Luke and John, that while it is true resurrection comes in stages, it is also true 
that resurrection is born out of community. These gospel accounts, they didn't just fall out of the sky. No, they were birthed out of these, these different communities, the Mark community, the Matthew community, the Luke community, and John's community. They were birthed out of these communities of faithful people trying to make sense out of the resurrection in their own lives. And resurrection is born again and again and again out of this community of which we are a part. The story unfolds differently as our lives unfold. It gets told differently each time in each of our communities and in our families. Friends, we need one another in order to experience resurrection. Easter is an experience of community, not a matter of personal salvation. It's an experience of community, not just a holiday on a calendar. It is true in our faith as it is in our lives. It's true in our lives as it is in our faith. Third, we are reminded as we look at this unfolding story that resurrection doesn't only happen in the pages of our Bible. This is not a story that sits on a page. Resurrection happens over time and in community, and it happens especially when we go and tell. That's how we get to see the risen Christ. Remember that angel that spoke to the women? But go, he said, tell the disciples that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Go and tell. There you will see him. Did you hear it? Go and tell. There you will see him. There where? Where you go and tell. That's how we see the risen Christ in our lives. When we go and tell. When we go and tell someone how we thought it was all over and it was, but the new life sprung up anyway. When we go and tell of how we were so afraid because the loss leveled us. And then we were awestruck at the possibilities that opened up at the same time. When we go and tell how long the night has been, but the sun rose anyway, again and again and again, the sun has risen. When we go and tell of what death has dealt us, but that it didn't have the last word. When we go and tell of hope and fear, terror and amazement. When we go and tell, there we see the resurrected one. It's true in our faith as it is in our lives, and it's true in our lives as it is in our faith. While it was still dark, while it was still night, Jan Richardson writes, while she could not see while she thought death held sway, while she grieved, while she wept, while it was still dark, resurrection began. It's true. Resurrection began long before you even knew you needed it in ambiguity of the big messy middle of the already not yet. It began there. And it's still unfolding in us and through us. Thanks be to God for a love like that. I hope having heard this version of the Easter story, that even though we may still have terror and fear, that we might find hope and amazement and that we will each go and tell of the resurrection that we have experienced, that we have known, 
You'll see resurrection there in the story that's unfolding between us. And I want to close today with this. Here it is. That CUCC, the worship team, wanted to give you a reminder of all of that, a gift on this Easter morning, a reminder of the way that the resurrection unfolds over time and in community. You have a you have a small wrapped gift in each of your Holy Week kits. And again, these are Holy Week kits that we sent out to local CUCCers. But if you live away and you'd like one of these, I'm sure we can send one to you. Just let Carla know in the office. Friends, if you've not unwrapped this gift yet, now is the time to do it. So I'm going to unwrap mine. Each household has been gifted a rock. I have to make sure I can see here. So each household has been gifted a rock and each rock has something like this on it. Mine has sunshine and butterflies and a flower on one side, all symbols of the resurrection. And on the other side, there's an ampersand, the and reminding us again and again and again in the year 2021. These were all hand painted by people here in our community. And the worship team wanted you to have one of these to remind us of the Lent journey that we've just experienced so that we'll remember again and again that we're invited in again and again that God meets us. Again and again, we have to draw on courage. We're held together, we find ourselves, and again and again, the sun rises. Over and over, again and again, the sun rises. Even when we're afraid, even when we're unsure. We hope that you will place this rock someplace in your house where you'll see it and be reminded again and again of these things we know to be true. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Friends, go and tell. Happy Easter. Amen. <clears throat> Our call to offering this morning. Today, our prayer time will happen when we gather at the table. So Pastor Leo will read your prayer request then. At this time, you're invited to go to the comments or chat and list your prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, your prayer request there. <clears throat> we pause in our worship now to remember that again and again, we are called to be the body of Christ, working together to make our world a more just, peaceful, merciful, caring place. This is what we do as a church, whether creating a space where college students feel safe to explore the big questions of life, feeding hungry people good, nutritious meals, supporting one another through life's trials, gifting our children with a faith that will support them their whole lives long. We're gathering week after week <clears throat> to worship, spreading a message of hope during this difficult time. This is what we do and who we are as a church. Our mission and ministry is made possible through the generosity of you, community UCCers, members and friends, you are gift of time, expertise, talent, and treasure. To make a financial gift to CUC, you can go to our website, www.community-ucc.org, or you can click on Donate and Give. May God bless and multiply all that is ours. Our anthem today is called Rejoice.
Oh, Elena, that was gorgeous. Friends, it is time for us to gather around the communion table. Um, it is a joy today to be um, to be joined with Pastor Connie and Pastor Nate as we officiate together. We're going to share your prayer concerns um, around the table, just like families do. And so be sure to uh, to put those in the comments or in the chat. Let's begin. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday and the darkness before dawn. And still. And still. We believe. We believe that again and again, the sun will rise. Again and again, God will draw near. Again and again, the tomb will be empty. Again and again, love will win. Again and again, God will lead the church. Again and again, and again and again, we will be loved. The journey will not be perfect, but again and again, the sun will rise. Here at this table, we dare to profess our faith, and again our risen Lord meets us here. Come, let us share the feast, for Christ has prepared the way and all are invited. For a Holy Communion this morning, as we gather around this table, I invite you to lend Christ your table. As the woman in the upper room lent him the Passover table, and two friends from Emmaus welcomed to their table, one they thought was a stranger. At this table, we share the brokenness of our lives, knowing that Christ is made known in that brokenness. Lend Christ your table, your bread, your cup, your opened a stranger's heart. Friends, this morning we, we lend Christ our open to strangers' hearts as we lift these prayer requests together. First, a joy that this past Monday at Jubilee Cafe, we served our 10,000th meal that is quite an accomplishment for only three and a half years, for an entire year of those three and a half years being in pandemic when we can have a, a third of the volunteers uh, that we had prior to the pandemic start. But I wanna celebrate this ministry that we do together at Community United Church of Christ and in partnership with so many people in our community, so many farms and businesses and stores, um, places that make it possible for us to feed those who are hungry in their spirits and in their bellies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also lift up this morning um, CUCC member Martha Seif. Um, Martha has been um, hospitalized. She's had a procedure and she's been recovering. I heard from Martha's daughter this morning um, that she is in really good spirits. She wants to wish everybody a happy Easter and she has moved to a rehab facility um, in Hoopston. Her daughter says thanks to the congregation for well wishes and prayers. She's received many cards from her friends at CUCC and you'll, um, you'll get information tomorrow via email on how how to send Martha a card. Might you consider um, all of our at-home members and folks who live in facilities, they would love to hear from you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Turning now to um, the chat on Zoom, Kathy Lee asks for prayers for her sister, Jen, who we've seen in so many of our, of our hymn videos. Jen was recently um, diagnosed with COVID. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Allison Anders um, asks for prayers for her parents, friends, Jack and Sue. Both are hospitalized and losing their ability to live independently. Prayers also for my parents, Allison says, Diane and Rudy, as they try to support their friends in, an un in unanticipated ways. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tom and Jean asks for prayers for Tom's stepsister, Anita, who was diagnosed with breast cancer this week and will be having surgery in the coming weeks. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Mary Lou and Nancy ask for strength and healing for their friend, Sister Caroline, who will be undergoing surgery and treatment for melanoma in the coming weeks and months. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The Robin Holt family asks for prayers for the family of an acquaintance who recently died by suicide. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Carla asks for prayers for the family of Chelsea, who died as the result of a car accident where another driver was being chased by police and struck her car. She and her 18-month-old daughter were in the car and the baby has survived with minimal injuries, but is now left without her mother. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jennifer Cromley um, offers prayers of gratitude for our son getting his first dose of the vaccine. God in your mercy and in deep thanksgiving, hear our prayers. John and Sue, ask for prayers for the family of Camden, their seven month old son who died of a heart attack on the 29th of March. His family is devastated. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, checking on Facebook. So friends, I don't see any prayer requests on Facebook, um, but that does not necessarily mean that there aren't any prayer requests. Um, we'll double check. Sometimes it's glitchy and it doesn't show us what we need to see, but we'll come back to those if we've missed any. Um, May asks for prayers for Myanmar under the attack of the military coup since February 1st. Yes, May, we continue to pray with you um, for friends and family back home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We continue now as we approach the table. We come from heartfelt hosannas and a long season of feeling like withered fig trees. We come from an alabaster jar abundance of love and hard questions. We recognize experiences of betrayal, denial, and the feeling that everyone we love has fallen asleep and left us alone. So we recognize this holy story. We remember Jesus washed feet and offered a covenant of himself broken and poured out for a small group of followers long ago, and for us in our time, that Christ was risen on Easter, though even in the joy of resurrection, he kept blessing and teaching, accepting hospitality and giving us hope to eat. Let us pray. Host of our salvation and visitor to our lives, Send your transforming power upon this bread and your freely given love upon this cup. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to um, get whatever it is that you have to break and pour. The bread on your table is blessed and broken, a meal of grace, sharing love. We will never be hungry.
and the cup on your table is blessed and shared like the overflowing of tears and joy. Drinking deeply, we will never thirst. We pour this cup out. May God bless it. Holy One, bless this broken body. Bless this cup that is poured out. Bless us in the eating of this sacred meal. Amen. You're invited to um, now to eat and to drink. And if you're worshiping with other people, uh, I would invite you to serve each other. And let us pray. In thanksgiving for this meal of grace and in the holy dispersion of virtual worship, we claim the risen Christ love found on every table. Let us pray together. O oh, Holy One, again and again we come to you with lilies and tears. With personal alleluias, we whisper that soar like the greatest choir. We claim the resurrection for those we love who are tenderly sheltered in your arms and name the resurrection as your invitation to all the weary, all those who need hope. Again and again, may our lives become your table in all the world. Hear us as we pray, as Jesus of Nazareth, our risen Christ, taught his disciples saying, our creator who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's time for the commissioning of the community, that moment when we commission you to go out and be the church in the world. Uh, I want you to know that we have a Bible study opportunity that is beginning um, in the next week or so. It's going to be, um, it's going to be an online option. Um, so you can be anywhere in the world and participate in it. Uh, we're going to be using videos from the work of the people. And this video series is based on a book by Peter Enns. This is for anyone who's ever had a complicated relationship to the Bible. Um, it, it, Peter Enns goes into um, how the Bible was written and why, and what do we make of this book that we're supposed to take seriously, but not literally. If you would like to participate, you can send um, Carla in the office an email. Again, her email address is info at community-ucc.org uh, and let her know that you'd like to participate. I'm also looking for someone who's interested in participating to facilitate um, this, uh, this Bible study. It's really easy to do and I'm happy to talk you through that. There's a leader's guide that goes with it. Um, who else has announcements today? Anybody? I'm looking. I'm yep. seeing a few. So, um, Tom and Jean, myself, and looks like Randy as well. Great. Let's do wards and then we'll do Randy and then you. Good morning. Happy Easter. Um, just a reminder from your mission team that we are still collecting men's underwear, sizes medium through 2XL. We took a, um, some bags over yesterday to drop off and we'll take more as we receive them. So if you haven't gotten a chance to shop yet and do, do please do that. We'd love to have some more to take over. Um, secondly, be watching for an email this week that has a survey from the mission team to help us sort of narrow down the local organizations that we would like to pursue more mission partnerships with. Um, there are many good options out there and we wanna make sure that we are um, 
taking your opinions into account as we pursue those um, organizations and those partnerships. And then Tom has something to say too. Just wanted to remind you that Pub Theology is starting a new book tomorrow, uh, All We Can Save. Uh, this is a collection of short essays, um, all written by women who are um, taking charge of what we can do to help save this planet and save our climate. So if you'd like to join us, um, we'll be reading the first section for tomorrow and discussing it. We'd love to have you. Let me know if you're not already on the email and I can get you the link for our Zoom meeting. Thank you. And I think Randy was next. Okay. Uh, happy Halloween from uh, Hospitality Committee. And I get to have the first honor of saying happy birth uh, birthday wishes for April. First, we have Pat McQuellen, Dave Wilcox, Patty Grope, Dan Dobson, Kathy Lee, Matt Towson, Owen Mahana, Shane Brownfield, Allison Radick, and that's it. Happy birthday, everybody. Thank you. Happy birthday. We're going to be sharing birthday greetings uh, every month. Um, so happy birthday to you who have birthdays in April. Let's go to Nate. Hi there um, from Campus Ministry. So we're going to be doing a Bible study after this. So I want to invite all the Campus Ministry students here to come and continue our Easter celebration and hang out. Um, and then also that uh, the study, the Bible study the church is doing sounds fascinating. We'll probably come alongside for that as well. So for those who are interested in that conversation, we will be having it. Um, but the big announcement is, of course, um, that we're coming up on Queering Faith 4.0. And so that is going to be on April 16th. Um, at, and we would invite everyone who's on here to come and join us and listen to a conversation about the ways that uh, science fiction and fantasy and world building can be used to help create theologies and faith which are more inclusive so it's going to be a really fascinating conversation if you're interested in joining us i ask you to just register it's super easy the website i'll put in chat but for those on facebook um it's just luma lu dot ma so there's a dot in the middle lu dot ma slash q f 4.0 so that's simple. You just go there and you'll be able to register and join us for that amazing conversation. And Thanks. I think Kathy also has an announcement. Absolutely. Kathy. Hi, guys. Uh, happy Easter. I just wanted to let people know that we will have Zoom choir on Wednesday. We'll be working on a couple of new pieces, um, which will be familiar for people who've sung in choir before. And um, we will also probably talk about a time where we might be able to gather to sing outdoors together. So if you'd like uh, to give us your opinion about when would be a good time for that, it'd be great to come to Zoom Choir on Wednesday at 7. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Anybody else? No. Okay. So our... Closing hymn is the day of resurrection. Let's sing. Oh, 
Friends, as you leave this space again and again, may your mouth speak of God's goodness.
Amen and Alleluia. Happy Easter, everybody. See you again next week. Blessings. Stay safe.